Hello there everyone, Arya here, Pop Pop here. Thank you once again for joining me as we strap on in together into this plane as we set off on an expedition into the question of whether or not the worst monsters are no longer hiding in the dark but are out here in the light of the technology beaming right into our faces. Today we're discussing the 2020 case of a young boy who was lured from his home and murdered by someone he had befriended on Snapchat. It was an early summer morning in August when 14-year-old high school freshman Jose Nunez left his home in Bridgeport, Connecticut around 4 a.m. According to authorities, Nunez was meeting 19-year-old Deontay Willoughby, whom he sometimes conversed with on Snapchat. But the relationship wasn't confined to social media. According to Wendy Rivera, Nunez's aunt, Willoughby would hang out with younger kids in the neighborhood and buy them things. She said he would buy them Uber Eats, he would give them money for anything. According to reports, Willoughby also was a former police explorer, a role that gives young adults the opportunity to explore a career in law enforcement by working with local law enforcement agencies. The authorities say the perceived purpose of Nunez meeting Willoughby so early in the morning was so the two could have a sexual encounter. But Willoughby ultimately strangled the boy to death before dumping his body in a wooded area near Oxford, 20 miles away from Bridgeport. Upon discovering that their son was missing, the family reported the incident to police later that day. According to an arrest warrant affidavit, a witness who identified themselves as a friend of Willoughby told police that Willoughby had admitted that he killed a boy named Nunez and left the body in a remote location. The next day, police followed Willoughby from Bridgeport to a wooded area of Oxford. Police witnessed Willoughby get out of his car and meet a woman who drove there separately. According to police, the two individuals walked into tall vegetation, then returned after a short time, walked to their cars, and drove off. Officers immediately searched the area and found Nunez's body. River said her nephew was thrown away like a piece of trash. Other officers still tailing Willoughby pulled him over and arrested him. He was charged with murder, murder with special circumstances, for example, when the conditions of a crime are grave enough to earn more severe punishment, and risk of injury to a child. Police did not provide any further details about the woman who had met. Willoughby. But that isn't the whole story. Police then arrested a different 14-year-old boy as a second suspect. The boy, also from Bridgeport, but whose name was not released because of his age, surrendered to police and admitted he played a role in Nunez's death. He was charged with murder and conspiracy to commit murder. Regarding the 14-year-old suspect, Nunez's mother, Carmen Valez, told reporters, I always had a bad feeling about him. It was always in the pit of my stomach. Police never confirmed whether this second suspect is the one who originally told them that Willoughby had killed Nunez. The case took another turn when Willoughby recorded his confession on video, where he said he killed the boy because Nunez had sent him sexually explicit photographs on his cell phone in the past and then tried to extort money from him on numerous occasions over the previous six months. Willoughby also said the victim had attempted to rob him with a BB gun. Police were unable to independently confirm these claims. And that wasn't the only mention of money. Jose Nunez Sr., the victim's father, said that the night before his son's murder, the boy had asked Nunez Sr. to send money via Cash App to the account of the 14-year-old suspect. Nunez Sr. said his son told me to send the money to the kid's phone, adding that the suspect wanted $50. With two suspects in custody, the family said publicly that they believe more people were involved in Nunez's death. Valez said, somebody has my son's phone because the police don't have it, adding, there's way more to the story. However, police said they did not anticipate any additional arrests for Nunez's murder. Willoughby eventually pleaded guilty to murdering Nunez before a superior court judge. He could face up to 50 years in prison, but his lawyer, a public defender, can argue for a lesser term under the plea bargain. A supervisory state's attorney told the judge his office was dropping the charge of murder under special circumstances, which could have resulted in Willoughby getting a life sentence without the possibility of parole. It's unclear why prosecutors didn't go for the charge of murder under special circumstances. Perhaps it's because the notion that the boy was potentially blackmailing his killer created too big of a wrinkle in the case. Yet police could never confirm that, so perhaps the other two counts of murder and child endangerment were just easier to prove overall. Apart from the actions of those who killed Nunez, his family says a lot of the danger comes from social media itself. Higno Campos, Nunez's stepfather, said, Parents watch kids with phones. You can lose them 
they can get murdered, or they can even become a murderer by being manipulated by an older guy. He added, these people were able to get to Nunez on Snapchat and lure him right out of my house. Although it appears that justice has been served, there are still several unanswered questions about this case. First, who is that mysterious woman that the killer met the day after the murder? We can infer that Willoughby walked her to where he hid the body. Nunez's family said they believe more people are responsible for their son's death, but police claim that they have arrested everyone involved. Perhaps the woman is a person who Willoughby came to for counsel after he killed Nunez and who has no first-hand knowledge of the actual killing. But if so, where is Nunez's phone? Smashed and buried in pieces? We may never know. And then there's the question of whether Nunez was really blackmailing Willoughby. Let's be perfectly clear, blackmail is no excuse for the murder of a child, but it could explain why Willoughby is receiving a more lenient sentence than life without parole. Police say they could not confirm the blackmail, but that doesn't mean it wasn't presented as a viable theory in court. What about Nunez's father sending money to the 14-year-old who was later arrested for the murder? Is that an example of Nunez extorting someone else close to him? Or is a reverse scenario the real truth? Was the 14-year-old suspect actually blackmailing Nunez, making the boy a victim twice over? It's possible the police have these answers and have decided not to release them at this time. At this point, we can only heed the warning of Nunez's stepfather, imploring parents to keep tabs on their kids if they are using social media. If kids end up talking to the wrong people and getting roped into situations that even adults would struggle to navigate. Parents might lose their children for a night, or they may lose them forever. I mean, overall, as always, a very tragic case. And in this one, if there are so many factors to it which are upsetting, both from the relationship between an adult and a very young minor, to obviously the murder, the potential blackmail. There are just so many elements to it that, I mean, that just speak to kind of how dark the world can get at times. I'd love to know your thoughts as always, but as dark as that story was, I'm always appreciative of you being here to walk with me into that darkness. So thank you very much for your time and I look forward to seeing you in the future. And until then, as always, take care and stay safe online.